I was feeling very productive today because I returned four amps to the local music store I do in town work for in Memphis, Martin Music. And uh, waiting for me were nine amplifiers. And back when I was rocking the minivan, I would have gotten all nine amplifiers. But now that I no longer have the dadmobile, I was able to get these four into my golf. I'll get the next on the next trip. So I'm going to share with you guys what I do with these amps when I first get them home. I do what I call amp triage. Just give myself a general idea of what's wrong with them and how likely they are to be uh, a longer repair or a quick repair. And I will generally turn around the, the quick ones fastest. Just, I only have so much space. Let's get them done, get them gone. And uh, everyone's happy with that. The guys who have amps back two or three days later think I'm a miracle worker. And then I can spend the time with the others that are necessary or if parts need to come in. So we've got here a, uh, a Blues DeVille or Hot Rod, I'm sorry, Blues Deluxe or Hot Rod Deluxe. I've not looked on the back. What this one's doing is it's randomly changing channels and the jack, input jacks are bad. Well, the input jacks are bad on all, all of these. Randomly changing channels tells me it's the problems with the low voltage supply. And the low voltage supply on all these is suspect and they all have bad input jacks. Um, probably is going to have some issues with its filter caps as well. So that's going to be a little bit of a longer one. Not very long as such things go. I do six of these a month maybe. Uh, but you know, no surprises there, but not something I can turn around today. Then we've got a Vibrolux, a custom Vibrolux reverb amp. And it says reverb, uh, general service checkup. Okay, well depending on what they have going on in there that one also might go a little bit longer and that one's going to take some more uh, diagnostic troubleshooting time so that one's also back of the pack we've got an orange rocker verb 50 here and it says uh, feeds back on dirty channel all tubes are new well that's interesting and that may be something simple Maybe something complicated, but it's at least not something I run into every day. So that'll be fun to find out what's going on with that. Um, if it has its own uh, filter cap for used only in that gain stage, it could be a bad filter cap causing that squeal or oscillation. We'll find out. It could also just be a bad solder joint. And then we've got an AC15 custom here. And it says first channel out. Well, that's probably the easiest one. That's possibly just an AX7 or a, a, a multi-pin connector that's come loose. So we're going to start with that one and see if this is something I can have done in 30 minutes to an hour. Alright, that amp is fixed. It had a bad uh, preamp tube in V1. This little uh, generic Chinese tube. And uh, that's what it has in V1, V2, and V3. I put in a JJ I have this run as a test. 
And uh, not only did channel, the normal channel come back, but the top boost channel has got a lot more gain, which is one of the reasons I suspected it was the preamp tube, because while there was sound on the top boost channel, it was anemic. <laughs> So I'm going to contact the owner and let him know if he wants just the one tube or whether he would like to have a full set of better tubes in this amp uh, because all these are just generic ones that it came with and even if they were good originally they were shipped you know two three thousand miles between the factory and, and here and I don't know how much he's gigged with it or whatever uh, they were not great tubes to begin with and I'm going to give him the option of other tubes or just changing out the one. I'll uh, probably put a uh, tongue saw in there. I like the tongue saw 12x7s for current production. Uh, so are the JJs. There's about a $5 price difference. I think the JJs are actually really hard to get right now for whatever reason. But um, the only place in here I would not use a tongue saw or soft tech or most Russian tubes is V2. It is a cathode follower stage and has a lot more voltage on the cathode. Um, than, uh, oh, for whatever reason, the modern Russian tubes are happy with. The uh, Muller CV4004 is a Russian tube that seems to handle it fine, but in general, that is a good spot for a Chinese tube or a Slovakian tube like a JJ. Just putting that out there while I have this amp here. Anyway, I'm going to call the owner on this, uh, but this will be a very minimal repair cost, and it's really just going to vary on whether he wants all new tubes or just the one. So let's take a look at that orange next. Very, very dirty amp. Once again, if you have amps like this, once or twice a year, take them out into your driveway with a can of compressed air from the hardware store. Do the jacks too. You can, it's missing some, some uh, dress nuts here on the center return on the reverb, I'm sorry, the effects loop. And as far as I know, that effects loop uh, it's not switchable. It's always there. That might be the source of the squeal. It may be that there's a dirty uh, contact in there or just a bad solder joint from it not having any mechanical support and that it is more audible. That's loose too. More audible when the amp is dirty than clean. We'll find out. Turn this thing on. In the dirty mode. While it warms up, I'm going to get my guitar. I haven't taken out the cab yet in case it's just a microphonic tube. But... Master volume knobs on that channel at noon. I turned down the master a little bit for my ears and the neighbors and uh, turn up the gain. Dirty, there's a bit of a hum. I'm going to dime the EQ, get the worst possible sound. <laughs> issues with the app. Um, there's some staticky stuff in the background. Uh, the pots are dirty. The entire amp is filthy. And I need to triple check the solder joints and all these jacks because they're all the nuts are loose which means that the stress of uh, any mechanical going in and out is on the uh, solder joints rather than just on the jack. And I've got the replacement uh, uh, dress nuts for the center return. Can't really tap the preamp tubes too much. The speaker jack 
Connection seems a little bit iffy, and that might just be dirt. But unless I see something really bad inside the amp when I have it open, there's always the possibility with things like this um, that the owner has a bad instrument cable or bad pickups if it says it squeals on the overdrive channel, feeds back on the overdrive channel. You know, that could be uh, input error. We will find out. So I definitely need to open this up. But as you can hear at quite loud volume with uh, my Strat with its Sir Thornbucker, while there was feedback, it was the kind of stuff people pay extra for. It wasn't uh, anything to complain about. So let me uh, discharge this amp most of the way. Sorry about that. And then we'll open it up. And again, quick and dirty way to discharge now. Turn the master up a bit. And what happens again, for those who didn't see it in the previous video, is that since there is no new DC coming from the rectifier once the amp is unplugged, but it, there, it uses all the available DC stored in those caps to try to make that sound until it just cannot do it anymore. There's no more sound that's possibly made, at which point those caps are really low in voltage. I'll confirm that before I touch anything, but that's a pretty good basic way to get the, the uh, caps discharged unless something is wrong inside the amp. That will not be foolproof. Always verify with a meter. All right, time to get the chassis out. Number three screw, please people. Look at the size of the screw head. Look at the size of the screwdriver bit. Make sure that they line up and there's not a big gap. There's no slack. That's how you chew screws up. Use a number two on a number, uh, screwdriver on a number three screw. Soon everything's chewed up and nothing works. Now I'll tell you a dirty secret. Once you get to the point where there's no mechanical resistance to it, you can finish with the number two. There's no stress on it at that point. But any point where there's a mechanical resistance that the screwdriver is going to have to overcome. Use the correct bit. Oranges are not fun to get in and out of the cabinet, even when they're clean. Some of them have that big wooden shelf on the bottom instead of rubber feet. I guess you can't see what I'm doing, but trust me, I'm just removing the last two feet slash chassis screws with the app flat so it doesn't fall or slide around in there and scar up the orange Tolex. This is the part where when you're pulling the chassis, you gotta be careful and don't stick your fingers inside even if you suspect that you've discharged the caps properly because until you confirm that there's no voltage, assume there is. These reverb tanks are not fun to disconnect in here. Let's see if I can show this. They're right up against the wall of the wood. It's really hard to get it to come out. You have to be at an angle without bending anything. And there's not a lot to grip. There, there's one. Black on the left, right on, red on right. Okay, I can remember that. We'll talk about cleanliness later. Okay, I'm doing a visual inspection first. Paying particular attention to these screen grid resistor connections because they often have bad solder joints on these. 
These particular ones seem okay. Before I stick my finger in the app again, or further, I'm gonna take some DC measurements. So here's a chassis connection for the ground. Let's check at those screen grid resistors. That should be the second highest DC voltage in the app if there is any. 0.408 volt volts. So I think we're pretty good. Just to be sure, I'll check on the transformer connections. Yeah, we got under half a volt in this amp. So. Now I need to do something counterintuitive. I'm gonna remove the uh, dress nuts and washers, these chrome ferrules, from all these speaker jacks and other switch jacks on the back. And I wanna see if those any of these jacks feel loose on the board. If they are loose on the board, we have bad solder joints. And it's, it's pretty likely given that the send and return jack came in without them. And someone's been in here, the one for the, this 8 ohm had the dress washer in upside down. If they are broken, I need to lift this entire rear board out to reflow them. If they are not, then I'd rather not have to incur that labor charge for the owner. All of these will get cleaned regardless. Let's see if I can do this. I'm gonna take a small plastic pointer. I'll show this on the inside. Put it inside the jack. It's normal for that metal to move. I'm seeing if the plastic body moves when I leverage it. The whole board flexes a little bit. But... Okay, this is not guaranteed that there are no cracked solder joints, but it means that any that may be there are at least not egregious. So I'll see how they respond to cleaning. Pause this, move this out of the way, get all the nuts back. All right, this is frustrating. I wanted to re replace the two missing ones. They were here and here. I moved them to here and here, so the board has some more stability. And uh, I have big stashes. I tried the Neutrik, doesn't fit. Just tried the Cliff, doesn't fit. So maybe it's an Amphenol. I will have to look and find uh, the part that orange sells because it needs to have those on there. It holds the board in place. And it's gonna make everything a lot better. I did clean out those jacks and I uh, cleaned all the pots. Now the next thing I wanna do, just for my own peace of mind, so I don't miss anything, is check the fuses in this thing, make sure that none of them have been changed for 10 amp or 50 amp fuses or, other crazy things that I have seen all too commonly. So this should have a uh, 2.175 amp fuse. What a great specific crazy value to stock that no one ever has. So of course, someone put a five amp fuse in there. So let's take this five amp fuse out. Seriously, people, this is why I have to check. I'm saving you from yourself. A 5 amp fuse will kill your orange. Your orange is supposed to have a 2.174 amp fuse. Now I know, no hardware store, almost anywhere in America, let alone Memphis, Tennessee, carries a 2.174 amp fuse. That's just crazy talk, right? So let's put this 5 amp fuse with my stash of 5 amps. And I'm going to trade him out. I'll put in this 2 amp fuse and hope that 0.174 is just someone being extraordinarily precise. Better to have a fuse that blows than go to something too high. I can order some 2.174 amp fuses, just it's ridiculous non-standard value to use. This thing's got four 
6v6s, maybe a 3 amp fuse kind of amp. We'll find out. Anyway, let's check what's in the uh, other two fuses locations here. Where is the screwdriver I wanted for that purpose? Here it is. These are supposed to be 250 milliamps. Let's make sure that they are. 500 milliamps. Once again, people wonder why, hey, you didn't do much, you just changed some fuses. Why is the repair built? Because I have to protect people from themselves. I've got to do all this stuff. Change these 500 milliamp fuses to uh, 250 milliamp fuses, et cetera, et cetera. These are my 500s. Yeah. All right. These are my 250s. 125. So these must be my five, my 250s. I've got a lot of fuses I keep in these tackle boxes kind of things. Time delay 250 milliamp. All right, got two of them now. I swear to God. Am I the only one in the world who knows how numbers work? Ah, ah, ah. I know this is riveting stuff to watch on a video, but trust me, this stuff is crucial. All right, now we've got some internal fuses. Let's see if anyone has changed those out for the wrong thing. All right, 6.3, 6.3, I can see those are correct. And two 500s. Okay, 500 milliamp. Again, I'll put that one back so that it can be seen. I gotta move the camera, sorry, it's in my way. All right, now that all the uh, stuff on the back panel is tight and those jacks have been cleaned, I'll clean the input jack too before I'm done, um, and all the pots have been cleaned out so that static should be gone. A little bit more to go on that pot. But I'm not getting what you would call some Uh, excess noise because I'm standing with the pickups two feet from this end. Even with this sir, <laughs> it's always best if you're farther back from a high gain amp. So it's possible that the owner of this amp is using this at high gain in a small room and he's got unpotted pickups or something and so you will definitely have noise and squeal that you don't have when you're on the clean channel very hard sounding out but you know it is what it is i suspect that it's uh a little bit of a input issue. I will call the owner very nicely and find out some stuff about how he's using the amp and what his guitars are at all. Um, I think the amp probably has a clean bill of health. Well, it's not a clean bill of health. It's filthy on the other side. I'll take this outside and blow off the worst of it just because I'm a nice guy. But the amp seems to be in pretty good condition. I'm glad he brought it in because if I had not found those fuses and changed those fuses out, bad, bad things could have happened to this amp. Um, I'm also going to look up and make sure there's not a service note from Orange saying, no, definitely go to 500 milliamp or definitely go to 3 amp, but certainly not 5 amp on that fuse. I'm going to clean that pot a little bit more. Other than that, it seems okay. So. What's the tech to do? I, I'm not getting any squeal. I'll report back.